MetroCount, the traffic data specialists. Hi, welcome back to the MetroCount studio. I'm Vern Bastian, General Manager, and we've been out on site gathering some traffic data, coincidental with some video, to show you the fundamentals of data recording with the MetroCount system. The strength of the MetroCount system is the fact that we combine the data gathering with the data processing. And the way we do that is the data gathering always records traffic data at the lowest possible level. And in the case of our tube-based classifier, that's recording every individual axle. So regardless of the purposes of your survey, whether you're wanting traffic volumes, speed, vehicle classification, behind the scenes, is every individual axle. Now let's show you how that works. So we've been out on site and we've gathered some traffic data over a few days. I've brought that data back to the office and we're now analysing it with MTE. And the report that I have open is the individual vehicle report. Now that's just one of many, many reports that you can produce, but it happens to be drilling down to a very low level individual vehicles. Let's show you some of the vehicles. Uh, the first vehicle, I can highlight this line. On the 1st of October, when we were out on site, we recorded a vehicle at 9.41 and 9 seconds in the northbound direction, 62 kilometres per hour, 16.55 metres long from first axle to last axle. It was 3.6 seconds behind the vehicle in front. That was its headway. It was six axles in three groups of axles. And here's a value called rho, which is the correlation of axles in that vehicle, 1.00, meaning that the software thinks it's a perfectly classified vehicle. Now, in Australia, we call that a class nine. The wheel picture here, one, two, three, shows us the distribution of axles in that vehicle. And in other countries, the same information may be classified as a completely different vehicle. As we were out on site video recording the traffic, we can see the close correlation of the axle events with the reality. Here we have a single steer axle with a dual drive group, the first three axles making up the prime mover, and the tri-axle load group at the end of this, this unloaded flatbed truck. Uh -huh. Here's a vehicle in the southbound direction, 60.24 kilometres per hour, 10.03 metres long, 8.1 seconds of headway. It's a class eight in Australia. We call it an articulated five axle vehicle, a one, two, two. So that was a relatively short wheelbase tipper truck. So we can see the prime mover once again, the one, two, and then the relatively short distance to the load group at the end. And again, we're time stamping every individual axle. Let's see if I can find a motorcycle somewhere in this data stream. Just scroll through it. We can see that it's a motorcycle. In Australia, it's still classified as a SV, short vehicle or class one, because, it, because in Australia, we lump motorcycles, bicycles and cars all together. But we need to bear in mind that that's a post data processing convention that's applied to your data. You can apply any class scheme to your data. But let's look at this motorcycle. We can see that it's a motorcycle because, again, it was traveling southbound, 61.25 kilometers per hour. Uh, but we can tell it's a motorcycle because of its wheelbase, 1.53 meters long. Uh, we can drill down into the four axle events that make up this motorcycle. Even though we're looking at the individual vehicle report, you might find that you rarely look at individual vehicles, but it's a very handy thing to bear in mind because when you're producing one of the many other reports that are available, be they tabular reports like the weekly vehicle counts or uh, a class speed matrix or a chart with vehicle flow or uh, a speed histogram, what's behind those reports is every individual vehicle, or in fact, every individual axle. You're recording a snapshot of history as it occurred on the road and you have access to that in your data sets going forward.